So at this point, our server is working correctly. We do have to pass in the JSON web token and the JSON web token is authenticated using our auth middleware. Everything works fine in Postman, but we also need to update our code for the client side so we can get the accounts. Now let's go ahead and see that what parts of client side are working correctly. You can see that right now I'm inside the app component and the app component contains text boxes for username and password. I can go ahead and enter the correct username John Doe and the password is password and I can log in. As soon as I log in you can see that it is generating the JSON web token and it is putting the token in the local storage. So that part is working fine. Now what if I have another button over here in the app component which is saying get all accounts. And I need to perform a request to get all the accounts. So I will go ahead and say on click handle get all accounts, which will be our function that we will implement. So let's go ahead and implement that function. Now for the sake of simplicity, we are using one single file or one single component to create all of this stuff. In your application, when you perform a login, you most probably want to go to a home page or some other page. So get all accounts. So the first thing we need is some sort of a URL. Now, if we go back to Postman, we can see that this is the URL that we have. It's running on our own server. So we already have the URL. So let's go ahead and use that. Fetch URL. And it's a get request. Well, let's go ahead and see. Yeah, it's a get request to get all the accounts. In the body, we will also pass in the username. So get all accounts. Next, we can go ahead and say method. And the method is get headers content type. And in this case, the content type will be application JSON. And in the body, we need to pass in the username. So I'm going to go ahead and simply say json.stringify. Username. And I'm just going to hard code it to be username. Actually, the username will be in credentials. So we can also use credentials if you want to. Credentials.username should give us a username also. So we can use credentials.username. So hopefully that will give us a username. We will get some sort of a response back. We will go ahead and call response.json to get the actual JSON back. This will be accounts hopefully. And we will go ahead and print out the accounts. Okay, now let's go ahead and perform the request. So we get this particular error and this error is basically saying that since you are performing a get request, the method cannot have a body. So on the fetch API, because we are using fetch API, if you're using a get request, you cannot send in the body. Well, that is a big problem because inside the app.js, we have used body everywhere. See that? We have used the body right over here. So what should we do in this scenario? So we have to change a bunch of things to make it to work. Let's go back to our auth middleware and Look over here that if we are using request.body.username, doesn't really look like that we are using it, so that should be okay. 
So in our app.js, we are not going to use a body, but we are simply going to pass it as a route parameter. So you will pass in the accounts and username. And instead of body, we're just going to say params because we are going to extract the value that you will be passing right there. All right. Now making this change on the server side, we still need to check if the server side is working or not. You're no longer passing the body. The best way to check is by using Postman. So let's remove the body and try to pass in the username over here. Okay, looks like it's working. You can see that I have passed in the username right there in the URL and now it is working fine. So server is good and it's working fine. Now let's go to the client side and try to fix this error that we are receiving, which is actually saying that when you're using the fetch API, you cannot put a body on a GET request. So let's change this. What I'm going to do is retype this again from scratch. So fetch, now we need a URL. We have this URL where we're passing in the username right there. Now username can be different, so it will be better to inject the username. So I'm just gonna go ahead and see that if we can inject it using template literals and username would be in credentials dot username. Perfect. Dot then we will get some sort of a response. We will go ahead and call response.json, which is a promise. We will evaluate the promise in the next dot then. We will hopefully get all the accounts. And for now, we just want to go ahead and print out the accounts on the terminal. Let's go ahead and refresh it and perform a get request. Interesting. This is what we end up getting. Well, number of different things. First of all, we are not even logged in because we refresh. So let's go ahead and log in. So I'm gonna go ahead and say log John Doe and the password is password. So first we are gonna log in. So make sure that you are logged in. I am logged in now, hopefully. And I get unauthorized. And not only that, I also get a message which is saying that no authorization token were found. So what are we missing? If you have to guess, you can pause the video over here and try to see that what exactly are we missing? What do we have to pass in to the server that the server will have to validate? The good thing is that you already have this working in Postman. So let's check out different things in Postman. You can see that in Postman, in the headers, you ended up passing the JSON web token. But when you're making a request on your application, you're not passing the token. Now, how would I tell if I'm passing the token or not? Good question. Let's go to network tab. And let's switch this to XHR, which means that this is an AJAX request. And Let's go ahead and refresh it. First, I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Okay, so you can see my login request. Now I'm gonna do get all request. And this is my request, right? So in the network tab, you can see all the requests that your browser is making to the server. We are making a request which is going to this particular URL. It is a get request, so that's all good. But if you check out the request headers right there, and if you look at the request headers, which just goes on over here, do you see anywhere that you are passing the authorization header with the token? I don't see it. So if you don't see it over here in your network tab on a particular request, then it means that we are not passing the authorization header. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix it. Let's go ahead and see that how we can pass authorization header. 
The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say method get because now we need to pass in the header. So we need to go with the second argument after the URL, which is an object and method is get, that's fine. And headers, headers, we will have a, not content type, I guess in this case, we will have authorization header. And what will be the value of the header? Well, we will use bearer and the actual token. If I go to the application tab, I can see the token. Let's see if I can uh, copy this. Always try to hard code things first to make it work and then we can go ahead and resolve other issues. Okay, so now I'm sending the authorization token. I'm hard coding it so it will always be this token no matter what your username is. After this, I'm going to go ahead and refresh and again I have to log in. So my state values gets populated. Okay. Now perform get all accounts. Interesting. Now it's no longer red. So if I click on this, you can see that the get request and the status is now okay. Let's go ahead and scroll down to see our request header. Do you see authorization token over here somewhere? There we go. So it's always a good idea when you are sending anything extra to your server, always make sure that you're using the Chrome browser development tools, network tab to check the actual request. Because if you can't see this over here in the authorization token being sent in the headers, then there's no point doing anything because that's the stuff that you're missing. Okay, so we are getting this. Let's go ahead and click on the response and see what we get back. Oh, we get back all the accounts. So it looks like it's working. Now, obviously one of the biggest problems over here is that even though we are sending the authorization header and it's working fine, this authorization header was for a particular user like John Doe, but now we have hard coded the authorization header or in this case, the JSON web token. So that's not what we want. This means that this will be the authorization token for every single user and that is not true. Every single user will not have this JSON web token. They will have different tokens depending on their username, depending on what they what you know what they're putting in the token and all that stuff. So where can we get the JSON web token? Is there anywhere that you think that we have stored the token when we log in? Check out the login function over here. Do you see any place over here that is telling you that, oh, I have stored the token at that particular location and you can get it later on? You can pause the video over here and try to figure out where you have stored the token after logging in so that you can get it back later. Yes, it is local storage. So let's go ahead and get the token from the local storage. I'm going to go ahead and create constant token equals to local storage dot get token. And the key for the token is JSON web token. Now we have the token. I can go ahead and inject it right over here. Let me go ahead and use template literals because we are about to inject a value and template literals allow us to easily inject the value. There we go. Perfect. Now let's do it again. Just test it again. I'm going to go ahead and log in with John Doe and password. And I will say get all accounts. And now I get all the accounts. And I can display the accounts if I want to. Now this is all really good. But what about if I had another button where I have to go ahead and send the token again? I mean, I can have another button over here, right? And that will say update profile or something. It doesn't really matter what it says, but maybe there is a button over here and that is saying whatever, get profile or something. 
that is also a protected resource, which means that you have to be logged in to do that. Get handle, get profile. Let's go ahead and implement that function. Constant. There we go. So get profile is going to go and get the profile from our server. Let's say that we have a route on the server that gives you the profile. So let's just say over here profile and we will pass in the username and that is also protected. We will get request and response. Okay, so there we go. So this is also a protected route. What does that mean protected route? This means that you need to send in the JSON web token because if you don't send in the JSON web token, the authenticate middleware is gonna kick you out. It's gonna tell you, nope, you can't access those resources. So going back to our app.js, what do I have to do to get the token, to inject the token and everything? Well, I have to do, I have to get the token. I also need to go ahead and perform this similar request and I need to set the headers again. So it's safe to say that anytime my client, meaning the browser, is performing a request to the server and at trying to access a protected resource, every single time we have to get the token and we have to set the headers. Maybe there is much easier way that we can solve this so that we don't have to set the token again and again. It will be automatically set once we are logged in correctly. Because if we are doing this again and again, we are getting it from the local storage, we are putting it in the headers, that can get time consuming and that can also open the doors for maintenance nightmare. Maybe in the future your boss or your team lead is going to tell you that, oh, we're no longer calling it bearer, we're calling it JSON web tokens or JWT. Then you have to go to all of those hundred places where you copy pasted these lines and you have to change it. So let's go ahead. In the next lecture, we will learn about Axios framework that allows you to easily set up default headers for your request.